So hello there, welcome back to my channel. Today we will be preparing my April cover page. So this plan with me video will be a little different from usual. Actually, because I'm late this month, I decided to journal live on Instagram. And it's my first time doing this. I was very nervous. Um, you'll see that in my video, I fumble over my words. I I can't multitask. I usually don't. I don't usually talk, answer questions, and draw at the same time. Usually I just draw. It's a very quiet hobby for me. So it was different. Um, I was very nervous with so many people watching. But I was able to answer so many questions and meet so many uh, journalers from all over the world. I mean, there were some from Malaysia, India, China, Japan, Brazil, Istanbul. I'm missing so many, Idaho in the States. There's just so many, it was so cool. For me to get a feeling of the community that has been following me and be able to share my morning with all of you and even share a little bit of your evening or your afternoon or your morning. Sorry, this New York City is very loud if you hear cars obnoxious cars in the background that's because my window is just very noisy but anyways i was so happy and i'm still like so energetic from the time that we just had and so yeah i'm going to show you snippets of today's plan with me it's going to have uh, portions where i answered questions there were some really good questions that i tried to answer i don't know if they're like great responses but i'm gonna share those questions with you some questions were like how do you get inspired what inspires your color stories um how do you develop your style? How long does it take you to illustrate in your journal like this? So they were all really good questions. So how about we get started? Hello everyone. You're from Japan? That's so cool. Well, hi. What time is it there? I love rain too. Pluvio fill. I don't know if that's how it's really said. Thank you for joining. So I have my tea ready and I have a cup of water for my paints. I hope I don't get my tea and my water mixed up. So maybe I'll, I'll move my tea a little farther out. Sometimes I get them mixed up and then you know, I end up drinking tea water. I mean, well, paint water. Hello, everyone. Good morning. I'm so glad like so many of you are able to join and just say hello. Hello from Brazil. That's so awesome. I have someone from Japan, China, and Brazil. This is very, very cool. I'm very excited. Okay. So, um, I'm just going to get started. Um, yeah, I'm excited to start journaling with you this morning. So, as usual, I will be using gouache. And um, this is my favorite gouache that I use. It's the Holbein um, gouache. It's actually quite expensive. So if you were to start using gouache, I would recommend using cheaper brands um, because honestly, other than its color, I found other brands just as rich, like the paints are just as good. So Reeves gouache is really good. Windsor Newton is really good. Um, I just happened to use this one because I really, it was like one of my favorite artists was using it. And so I was like, oh, I need this one, but actually it's, it's okay, it's good, but we don't have to use this. I will be using color pencils, and these are my favorite color pencils. They're the Caran d'Ache um, Swiss made permanent color pencils. Um, they're very rich in color, they're soft and pigmented, and I can use them over paints, which I really like. I think I, I'd like to try using um, my Faber 
Castell uh, pen. Um, I usually use a Micron, so we'll see which one I use today. And for my inspiration, if you have watched my stories, you would have saw this already, but this is an image from Pinterest. I love plants, so this is what we will be using as our inspiration today. I already sketched out the image, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the, because you know, my, um, my cover pages are usually a cutout. Hello, hi Navdeep. Um, so usually my my pages are a cutout, so I do the front Polaroid kind of page, right? And then I do another illustration underneath of it. So for April, my plan is to do this uh, staircase um, in the first page, then I'm gonna cut it out, and then do another illustration of the house, maybe change up this part a little bit underneath of it. But I do hope I finish within an hour because <laughs> I'm like a little slow getting started this morning. Hello from Malaysia! What? This is so cool. I have bullet journalers, I guess, from Japan, from China, from Brazil, and from Malaysia. This is very, very awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna get started. So first, since I'm doing the staircase, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this door and these plants. So my favorite part, I love painting plants. So here I'm just painting uh, this bush here. I'm just, you know, using the brush tip and making a leaf shape kind of an impression of a leaf hello aline i don't speak english but i love your account i'm from venezuela and i live in spain well hello anita right anita i'm um i'm very happy to meet you and i'm very encouraged even though you don't speak english your 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 message is quite clear so thank you I'm really happy, I'm actually, I've never drawn a live alone before, so I'm actually really excited um, to meet you all. I realize my, that you all live in all different parts of the world, but it's actually more um, real to me right now, since you're all live with me. So this is, oh, gee, oh my goodness, hello! I can't believe you're here, I thought you wouldn't be able to join. Well, thank you for joining me. I love your choice of colors, so subtle and soft. Where do you get your inspiration from? So I usually get inspired from an image from Pinterest. And then for my colors, it's kind of silly, but basically I have really messy palettes. Um, and since they're already here, I kind of just use whatever I have been using, but I love earthy tones and I love really like whimsical and sweet colors. So this is like kind of that palette. Um, and then this is my other palette where it's more earthy, you know? Um, yeah, I feel like I go between, I go between using, so let's see, January was, like these whimsical kind of like sweet colors, right? And then I have this earthy and um, bright and colorful palette that I use. And last, I guess last month I started kind of a more duller sort of um, woodland kind of um, color scheme. But I think um, I want to do like a more colorful theme this month. So I'm getting back into using like my favorite colors of greens and pinks and blues and stuff. So these are good questions. You can keep them coming. Just chat with me. I look up once in a while to look at the chat. So, and tell me where you're from. I realize a lot of you are from all over the world and I'm so happy we're able to do this even though 
we're all from different time zones. So it makes me really impressed with what Instagram can do with bringing communities together all over the world. So I'm really happy to be able to get to know you all. Um, okay, I have a question here. It says, which is the best journal for paints and color pencils? Or pencil colors? Yeah, color pencils. Um, so this journal that I'm using right now is my friend's journal. Uh, my Mellow Days is a, a French stationery company that has developed a watercolor bullet journal. So if you're looking to bullet journal and you want a watercolor in your journal, they have made each page dotted but also a watercolor paper so i really recommend um this journal and then my favorite color pencil is the karen dache swiss um i don't know if you can see it but swiss color pencils they're very very pigmented and i'm able to use them over my paints um also, there are other journals that I love. So this little tiny journal is an art journal that I, I paint in. Um, you've seen it all the time. It's the Stillman and Burn journal. And this journal is a multimedia journal, so you can use your inks, you can paint in it. Um, they have different series, so some are better for painting if you, if you choose to just want to paint with your journals, not just a bullet journal. Um, I have a question for you all. Do you like using rollers or use uh, drawing organic lines, I guess? I don't know how to ask that question. Straight lines or wobbly lines? Hmm. Let's see. Um, organic lines. Organic lines. Help. Okay. Ooh. Organic I like you guys. Thank you. I also love organic lines. It makes me feel like um, y'all agree with me. <laughs> but no, I do love looking at precise, uh, clean, straight lines though. That's, that's, that's an interesting conversation we're having this morning. And the answer about Prismacolors, are they worth it? Um, they are good markers. I have Copic markers, um, which I prefer over uh, Prismacolors, only because um, Copic I feel like have more uh, like pastelly colors that I love to use. But I I actually don't use a lot of marker in my work. Um, but from my experience, I um, prefer Copic over. Um, Prismacolor. Also, Copic markers has a uh, brush end, which is really nice if you want to do calligraphy or paint with them. All right, so I think I'm okay with my front page right now. I'm going to exacto knife cut into the space to reveal reveal my next page. Hello. Okay, so. Let's exacto knife into this. Usually I record a uh, YouTube video, but this month, since I'm so late, I decided to just journal with you all. While I'm cutting, I can't read the um, convo box, chat box, but I will look at it when I get a chance. Focusing on not trying to cut my finger. So I'm cutting these stairs here because I usually do two illustrations for my cover page. One on top and one right underneath. So. Have you ever done a Dutch door before in your journal? I think they're really cool. I haven't done a practical one though in a while. These are all just very decorative. Ta-da! Hello from the Philippines. Oh, that's so cool that you're making breakfast this morning. Um, from when you started journaling in 
Oh, sorry, I, I think I missed the first part of your question. From when you started journaling and these types, these art styles? Um, when I started journaling, my art style was different. It was very, I think I, I try to paint things pretty realistically, um, but then I was very inspired by illustrators and I started to try their style. And so that's how I got here, I guess. I just kept practicing things I liked, things I didn't like, and I ended up here. Though I feel like I'm still developing my style, very honestly. I don't really know what it is yet, but um, we're all learning, right? All right, so I'm gonna draw paint in the roof. Journaling is actually a very uh, quiet hobby for me. So it's very different right now that I'm talking so much. But let me see. So, hello, Canada. Do you feel nervous before you put paintbrush to your paper? Hi, Elaine Draws. Um, that's a good question. Yes, I kind of... No and yes. N no if what I'm painting is not for show. I don't get nervous because I know this is just for my eyes and I'm okay with making mistakes because it's all part of the learning process. But yes, I get nervous like when I'm being recorded right now. I'm like, you know, I could make a mistake, right? And um, and then it would be um, public, right? And so that's a little, it could be a little embarrassing if, yeah. But do you? Do you get nervous uh, when you're about to paint? You know, sometimes I get nervous just because my uh, watercolor paper is quite expensive. And I'm like, oh man, I don't want to, I don't want to waste this paper. But we're all here learning. I think even the best artists are always learning, right? So it could be a little nerve wracking, but once you start painting, it's like, so um, therapeutic, right? Hello from Sing Sarah from Singapore. Hi. Oh, uh, it okay. I'm just scrolling up a little bit. So is that Marius? And um, yes, a bit too much of a perfectionist. I know. Perfectionism. Oh man. I think painting is actually going to help you break out of that. Um, making mistakes and seeing them as stages of growth um, and even finding opportunity from a mistake to make something more beautiful from it. I think that's what I love about painting. And let's see, shading. How did you learn it? Shading. Hmm. I guess um, I did take some art classes, um, of course, um, in college and in high school and in middle school, actually. I took art classes throughout my life. But I think for shading, one of the best ways to learn it is really just looking at objects um, and just, just um, studying the light source and uh, the shadow. Because like everything we see you know, um, where the sun is hitting has a light source, right? And always has a shadow. If you have a video light um, and you're like able to, to use it on an object, you'll be able to see light source and shadows and do some still life drawings or paintings. I think that's really helpful, you know, to identify. But though, I feel like my illustrations don't have a lot of shadowing so I don't know the best person to ask that question I'm journaling from Switzerland wait that's very cool yay hello 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 I'm reading uh, thank you for your answer you're welcome let's see here's the question what type of tape do you use for your page borders I just use washi tape honestly um, it's pretty nice on the paper so when you peel away it won't uh, rip off the page but you could also use painters tape um yeah so hello everyone hi katie hi lorraine welcome i am 
doing the second page of my journal right now. Okay, I gotta speed things up a little bit. I feel like I've been here for 50 minutes and I haven't done much. Kind of paint in a little black box for the window. I don't usually verbalize what I'm painting or doing, so it's funny. I like mess up while I'm talking and painting. I cannot multitask. I'm thinking what I want to do with this page right now. Okay, let me see. I have some questions. How did you find your own style of painting? You know, it's a really good question. I um, feel like I'm still like developing my style. I don't, what I did though at the beginning was I just painted um, in every type of style. Like whether it was realistic or abstract or um, like is kind of like ask i don't even know how to describe my um style whimsical kitschy i have no idea but um i found illustrators that i loved and from their work i um started to practice like you know similar uh illustrations that they did and then i I kind of just learned new methods. I feel like you start with an inspiration. You know what's a really good book? I think it's really, but it's called Steal Like an Artist. Um, this little book is so cute and so good because it teaches you uh, just how to be freed from, I guess, your concepts as an artist and like how, you know, stealing from stealing not like actually like plagiarism but stealing as in like learning from others and learning by copying right that's how what we do as kids anyway right actually helps develop our style okay let me see did i miss any questions um how much time do you usually spend painting like how much time does it take to make this type of journaling art so Right now, I started, kind of started at 10, 15-ish. I was hoping to finish within an hour because I don't want to spend too much time on my journal because it's not actual like real paper that I can like scan and frame. Um, so I try not to spend too long on it, but I would say I usually spend like a minutes to an hour, kind of. Yeah, I feel like if I can like, actually focus um i don't take too long on my uh journaling illustrations it's yeah i try not to um because really the paper can't actually handle like hardcore painting so i feel like a lot of journalers who actually paint in their journals they actually paint um on different paper and then they cut it and then they uh, they, they stick it onto their bullet journals your idea of bistro table and chairs would be so cute. Okay, yeah, that's true. Let me think. So, hmm, let's do some, how about let's do some fairy lights? We'll drape some fairy lights. I love fairy lights. I have fairy lights all along my wall in my room. And then I will also do plants here. So I think, I love like gardens with lots and lots of plants shrubberies and stuff what do you like to journal um listening to or when you paint and draw what what type of music do you like to listen to i love listening to hymns if it's not lo-fi it's hymns for me definitely i like calming music i think that's why i also love audiobooks i used to have an audible account but then i unsubscribed because i got magnolia network and i was like i'm just gonna listen and and learn how to like paint and draw and make flowers and decorate my my backyard and stuff with joanna Gaines. um <laughs> and i also love podcasts actually there's like a little fly that's hanging out with us too it came from my plants okay i'm sorry little fly okay hello from istanbul wow hi Okay, so you know how um, on the 
other side of my page, my first page, I used a paintbrush to do the bricks. Well, on this page, I'm gonna use my color pencil instead. Yeah. All right, let's see. I love it, I love it. Thank you, thank you so much. It's so pretty. Thanks, Lydia. Hello, okay. Oh, oh, it's a question right here. What's the difference between watercolor and um, gouache? I would say, okay, the main difference um, between watercolor and gouache, in my opinion, is the um, opacity. So with uh, gouache, you can actually achieve, let me see if I have anything in my, um, so let me see. So all of this is actually gouache, but let me try to find a um, illustration that's very, um, that is not very watered down because with gouache, um, if I don't water it down, it gets super um, pigmented. Okay, this, this notebook doesn't have the best, I water down everything. So if you can see, you can almost achieve a acrylic-like um, opacity with the gouache, but with watercolor, it's very transparent. So if you can see, watercolor is very transparent, like someone has said before. Um, you get a lot of, uh, you can get a lot of gradations of transparency. Um, this one's highly sa saturated watercolor, so it, it does get oh, very saturated, but it will never get super opaque um, like gouache does. And I feel like if you're new at using paints, I totally recommend gouache because with gouache, if you water it down a lot, you can make it similar. You can use it similar like watercolor, but then if you use it with a lot of paint and it's very um, thick, then you, it looks more like... Um, acrylic so if you're a fan of like rifle paper co they use gouache um and they use it with a lot of paint very like opaque and solid okay so i don't know if they're i'm scrolling down if you have any more questions let me know but i'm just gonna be wrapping up here so i'm gonna peel off the tape I think this is my favorite part, taking off the tape. Because um, you get all these, like, look at that super crisp line, right? Thank you for sending hearts. <laughs> okay. Look at that. Um, but yep, here we are. I might go in here and there just to um, spice things up a little bit after we leave, but let me write my username, Lee Nee Ale. So if you don't know, it's actually my name spelled backwards. <laughs> anyway, my username is hard to spell. All right, what size brush was I using? So Sarah, the brush size that I was using, um, these this brush is so old that I don't even have the size on here anymore, but I'm pretty sure, so this is a zero. Um, pretty sure, this could be like a detailed brush. Um, this bigger one was probably either a two or three round. So I, I usually use like size five round and under um, because I just like, I get more details, um, with my journal of using smaller brushes. This is another one. This is a one. So anyways, thank you for joining me today. Um, very happy to have been able to journal with you all. So hope to see you all again soon. Maybe I'll do this monthly. So if you're free next month, you can join. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, everyone. Okay, have a wonderful rest of Saturday.